What's going on guys? Welcome to the Pet Model Live channel. Thanks a lot for watching. Today we're going to talk about how I plumb my reef tank. What's going on guys? Sorry for the delay on this plumbing video. The project took me a little bit longer than expected. As you all may know, plumbing is the heart and soul of any reef tank. I want to make sure I plumbed everything correctly without any leaks. I spent several weeks planning and it was pretty complicated trying to figure out how I was going to fit everything in place, all my various equipment, all my various fittings. The first challenge was trying to find a way to plumb my Clara C. As most people do it, they usually plumb it from their overflow. But the way my sump is set up, I wasn't able to do that, so I had to figure out a way to plumb it from my manifold. My second challenge was trying to find a way to plumb my UV sterilizer. When it comes to plumbing UV sterilizer or any, or any kind of equipment, you want to make sure you have the correct flow going through it so that it works effectively. That's one of the reasons why I picked up several flow sensors, which brings my third challenge. Trying to figure out how to fit these flow sensors is also pretty tough and challenging. They're eight, about eight inches long and uh, you want to make sure you have those right before your equipment. So that was another challenge. And lastly, I wanted to make sure everything looked aesthetically appealing. This is my dream take, and why not make it beautiful? When it comes to hard plumbing, planning is essential. I began my process by visualizing the sump and equipment overall, just kind of get a feel for where I think it was gonna be. I watched several different videos, checked out so many different images on Instagram, reef to reef build threads, and I even drew up a plan that worked for me. Uh, every tank is different, so uh, what you see on different tanks may not work for you, but you can pick and choose those techniques that, that you can utilize and, and use on your system as well. I also wanted to mention that by no means am I a professional plumber. This was my first time working on any kind of plumbing project on a tank. I did hard plumb my saltwater mixing station, which you may have seen in my previous video, so I was able to kind of get a feel for it before actually plumbing my tank, which was really nice. After I drew up plans, I made a list of all the fittings and tubings I needed to execute my plan, and uh, I decided to go with blue schedule 40 PVC along with gray schedule 80 fittings. Uh, gray and blue are my favorite colors. So this is your chance to really personalize your tank and make it your own. So when you're setting up your tank and plumbing, don't be afraid to get creative with it. Uh, I ordered several different elbows, tees, reducers, a couple check valves, gate valves, unions, and true union ball valves in order to make my plan work. I ordered them from several different places. I'll make sure to include the links down below for you guys to check out. One of the downfalls to going with colored PVC and Schedule 80 fittings is that not a majority of local hardware stores will carry them. So when you order these online, make sure you order extra just in case you're making mistakes, that way you don't have to wait for these parts to come another week. Sometimes it takes some time for these to get back to you, so order extra parts. Once I received all my fittings and piping, I was ready to start the process. I first put a layer of clear liner to protect the wood within the stand. Uh, I know water is bound to spill, so I wanted to ensure the wood was protected. It also helps to prevent any scratches uh, when moving equipment in and out of the cabinet. On my first day, my main focus was plumbing my Synergy Reef Shadow Overflow Box down into my sump. I decided to go with a bean animal style method, which requires three drains coming down the overflow box, one main drain, a secondary, and an emergency drain. It doesn't really matter which one you decide to use as your main, secondary, and emergency line, whatever works best for you in your sump situation. On my sump, the drain lines are on the far left, so that's why I went with my setup. After reading various experience from other reefers, I decided to install 45 degree elbows going down to my sump. This helps reduce any possible toilet sounds and helps the water flow easily down into your sump. I had to be precise with my measurements in order for my PVC to go directly into the openings of my sump, as you can see. When plumbing your main drain line, make sure you install a gate valve. Uh, this helps you fine tune the water level in your sump and in your overflow box. A secondary gate valve is not necessary for your second drain line, it's not mandatory, um, but I decided to install one just for even more fine tuning if I had to. You'll notice that I also installed unions on my drain lines. This helps me enable to take the plumbing part if I need to do any maintenance or make any plumbing adjustments in the future. 
On my second day and third days, I focused on my return lines and plumbing my Clara C UV sterilizer and flow sensors. You'll notice that the space is really tight. When I first got my tank, uh, the manufacturers provided me with soft tubing for my returns. I think they thought it was a tight squeeze and saw hard plumbing, but with accurate measuring and utilizing 45 degree elbows, I was able to make the lines fit down into my sump. Super stoked about that. I have just enough space to install both of my MP40s underneath the plumbing. There are several areas where the fittings were just super paper thin tight next to things. That was one of the challenging aspects of the entire plumbing project, just making sure everything fit. Another reason why the project is so tedious is because I use primer along with cement. In addition, I also sandpaper the edges of my pipes after I cut them. This process is called chamfering. It helps the pipe fit easier into your fittings when you glue them. My last and final day was dedicated to my manifold. I decided to install two gate valves. I don't have any immediate plans to install anything to them at the moment, but it allowed me to hook up another media reactor for carbon and possibly an algae scrubber or algae reactor. I do have a small refugium section, so I'll have to see how successful it'll be uh, when exporting my nutrients. So after a total of four days plumbing and weeks of planning, my plumbing is now complete. Check it out. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and liked what you saw. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Tomorrow I'll be leak testing the tank. Hopefully everything goes smooth. I'll be sure to document that and share it with you guys. So I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video.